back. It's been a while. We've talked a lot, haven't we, on and off here, but it, it's lovely to to have you back. Yeah. Uh, how often do you think about how your life might have been different? Almost all the time when we think about the loss of uh, my firstborn and some of the things that's happening after. Um, one of the other things which I think about is very often now is that would my son be married, have kids, and then would I be seeing some of the buildings that he designed? Because I don't know if people know that I wanted to be an architect, and when my son decided that was that's what he wanted to be, I was over the moon. But um, as you, everybody know, that sometimes you have to just deal with some of the things that's happening to you in your life and try and do the best you can, and that's what I've been trying to do. But how would you have been different? Do, do, how, how has it changed you, do you think? It's made me, and I've just started to realize, it's, it had made me a different person. My outlook on life wasn't as bright as it used to be before Stephen's murder. And um, questions was being asked with whether or not... I was asking my question, did Stephen come here for a special reason? And I think he did, because in the early days, as you maybe, I don't know how early you came to this country. When I came here in 1960, the names and things that were being we were being called, you couldn't do anything about it. And people wasn't in, when you say to somebody, I'm being racially abused or somebody being racist, they would say, what kind of racism are you talking about? What kind of racism? Now, is something that people can discuss openly and talk about. And if you can't talk about something openly with people, then there's no way you can do anything about it. So one of the things I normally say to people now is that why do we have to wait for a tragedy when we know something is happening before you do anything about it? Give an example. The example is that racism, we were suffered racism in the early days and names being called and people used to deny it. You can't deny it now. There's so many organizations who is looking on race, racist behavior in in, in um, different different companies, um, organizations which is saying, uh, for instance, the police would never ad admit to being racially, um, what the name that they were given. Oh, institutional, institutional races. They would say that's not true, but it came out, and so they have to accept it and try to do something to try and make it better for people. It's been a little bit better, but we still have a long way to go still. Well, lots of people would say it's moved on a long way in 25 years. It's moved on, but it hasn't moved on to where it's supposed to really be. You know, we still have um, officers that don't believe in fairness and the behavior when they see the young boys on the street, the way they, they treat them is not right still. But it's a lot better than it used to be, I have to admit it. As soon as you've taken me to <clears> youngsters <throat> of today, how do you feel then when you see the number of particularly young black boys who are not killed by racists, who were killed most probably by other young black boys? Well, that's very disappointing for me. And um, sometimes I wish I, I had a magic wand to to just wave it and let them realize what they're doing is that we are we are after more or less killing ourselves. And this is the next generation that have to take over from us. And what do we do to educate them that we should be trying to work together and not killing each other? And the fact that when I talk to them sometimes, the, 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 the excuse they give for carrying knives is that they're protecting themselves because they don't feel that anybody else is protecting themselves. And then one of the other things which I do say to them is that you're carrying a knife to protect yourself. Uh, suppose you have an argument with somebody and that person then take away the knife that you are carrying to protect yourself and kill you, then you've been carrying a weapon that's going to end your own life. But then I can only discuss it with them. I, I don't know some of the issues that they face. I know some of the, the reason why they do things, 
because they are frustrated about the way they they the way they try to live their life and and we don't hear the good things that some of these in, these youngsters are doing we only hear about the bad things and we need to start making it the things that they're doing to make themselves better some of the young adults making it plain and, and, and showing out the public that they're not all bad kids out there. They have good ones as well. And then maybe the, the example of some of the good ones would rub off on the ones that's doing bad things. You think what you see is what you try to be. You think that the negative imagery constantly may well be saying to them, it's dangerous out there, you need to protect yourself. Exactly. And, and I'm, I'm just again, I'm, I'm saying that we should start making it public about some of the good things. You know, we have organizations which are doing good things for the, the youngsters out there. We haven't got enough organization to do things to get them off the street because all the, the, the places that they used to do is now running out of funding and there's no money to, to keep some of these um, things going that takes the youngsters off the street. Well, some people might view that as a perfect example of what you said before. Why do we have to wait for something to happen before we do something about it? Do you make a link between fewer youth clubs, fewer youth facilities and the rise in crime? Yes, I do. Because if you take them off the street and give them something to do, you know, some of these guys who are doing bad things on the street maybe find a, a profession by going into these these places that they used to go before. You maybe turn boxes or something like that. You you think um, the official bodies know that? The mayor, the home secretary, well, they, the, the prime ones who are taking away funding from Yeah, groups do you of think people. they know? Well, whether they know it or not, there's no way we can force them to do what they're supposed to do to make sure that the youngsters have something to go to and so they can learn something, some organ some trade or, or some profession by going to these places and getting them off the streets. So many times the family has come up in this conversation and you were a family. Yeah. You were a family unit. Yeah. And that terrible tragedy broke your family. Yeah, but the the, the it's a different incident that's what's that's happening on the street now. This was racism. We can't turn around and say black people are killing themselves because of racism. They can't say that. So that was a different issue. Now after so many um, youngsters being killed on a racism issue. I thought the, the youngsters who are now killing themselves would have seen that we need to get together and, and help each other, not kill, our, kill, kill ourselves. After you came to see me the last time, one of the most unkind things that was said to me about Stephen, you, me talking about it in the way we are and have been for 25 years is the fact that if this was a black boy killed by other black boys, we wouldn't be talking about it. And many more of those that have died, this one is highlighted because of the issue of, of race. Racism. Well, well, well don't, aren't we talking about the fact that these boys are killing themselves now? We're talking about it, aren't we? So, But we, we are helpless to do anything about it unless we can convince these guys to stop doing it. And because black is on black, a lot of people maybe don't see it as a big issue. What's your hope for the lasting, the, the legacy of Stephen's short life? Well, let's say this. The, the boys who killed Stephen uh, for being racist behavior that they've been doing didn't realize that they had killed somebody which would become like an icon in, because Stephen now name is, is being called all over the world and when an incident happened whether it be a black and black it's still his name is still being called but has he has that allowed you to move on the, the fact that your son's name is used for something it's now greater than it might ever have been is that any kind of solace for losing your child it's not a kind of solace to, to make me feel good about the fact that I've lost my first brown child. But it makes me feel good that my son didn't die in vain, in a sense. And that we can use his name to do a lot of good things instead of doing bad things. And I would like to see some of these guys who are killing each other look at the issues of being, of um, the, the incident which Stephen was killed for and said to them, well, at least we, we shouldn't be killing ourselves. We should be uniting and finding ways to make ourselves better instead of killing ourselves.
Do you think it would have an impact for them to know the hurt and pain it caused you? Well, I go to schools and university and I talk about it. So if they are not listening, there's no nothing I can do. I can only keep doing what I'm doing. There's a lot been made about forgiveness today, which is quite well, interesting. One one of the the thing which which I found that I was carrying a heavy burden, a load of hunger, and the anger that I was carrying was to do with me wanting something drastically wrong. Um, bad to happen. Some of, some of these guys will kill. Is that, what you, is that what you wished for? That's what I was wishing for, and and it had made me starting to feel ill. And and I and I explained to people why I've decided to give my my life to Christ. The day after Stephen was was killed, and I got up the morning to start calling people, to tell them. And and I, the first the, the question I asked myself, what can I do, or who can I go turn to, to help me through the situation that I'm going to be facing? And because I I came from a religious religious background. I said to myself, well, the only person I could turn to is the good Lord. And that's why I pray for him to strengthen me to find ways to do what I had to do and still doing what I'm doing now. When, when, did, the, when did the realization of the hatred, of it making you ill, of, of trying to find a way to turn that around, therefore forgiveness, give us a, an idea of when all that happened? That happened about two years ago when I listened to um, a family whose son was killed in different circumstances. So it's 23 years after your son yeah. died. You carried hate for 23, for 23 years. years. And the, the, the family actually told me the incident that their son was killed in. And they actually, the person who, the, 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 the individuals who did this actually asked the family, to forgive them. So I was under the impression that you can't forgive somebody unless they ask for forgiveness. So I did a research to see whether or not you can, you're, you're able to, 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 to forgive somebody whether or not they want it. And the research was telling me that I could. I could do it without their permission. It doesn't matter whether or not they permit me to do it. So I you, did it. You believe in karma? Do I believe in? Karma. Karma. You believe that if you do good things, they will follow you. Ergo, if you do bad things, it will also follow you. Well, whether you, well, you, whether you do bad things or good things, whenever whatsoever is going to be happening to you is going to happen. I feel that way. I don't know if I'm right. But I feel no matter how good you are or no matter how bad you are, if it's, if it's your destiny for something bad to happen to you, it's going to happen. When I've had really bad times in my life, when I've been against the wall personally, I don't know if it's like this for other people, I'm interested in your thoughts. When there's been no one else, I've turned to my wife. Well, Why didn't you turn to yours? Because we were facing the same thing. We were, same, we were, we were facing the same situation, the same obstacle, and, and I was talking about that today. We, as a, a human beings act and behave differently when we have bereavement. Bereavement was something that I didn't understand. In order to try and understand bereavement and try and deal with it in the best possible way I could, I did a course at Old Smith College, a year's course. And it was then I started to understand what bereavement really is. Bereavement is not just by you losing a loved one. Any loss is a bereavement. So if you lose, if you, you, you get a divorce, that's bereavement. If you lose a child, it's bereavement. If you lose your job, that's bereavement. So you went through two. And the, the bereavement, when you, get, when you are in bereavement, we all do it, we all deal with it in a different way. In the early days, I thought my ex wasn't Bere bere doing, um, going through bereavement because I was doing it in a different way from her. Some people would heat themselves and make themselves big. Some people would laugh all the time. Some people would make jokes. Some people would keep quiet. So all of these different ways people deal with bereavement. I was dealing with bereavement in a different, complete way from my ex. 
And so the mistake that I made was that she's not dealing with bereavement. She's not doing what I'm doing. You understand what I'm saying? So that was a mistake. Until I did the course, I didn't ask, I understand what bereavement was. But when I got to the state where I did the course, I started to understand that people do it. For instance, I couldn't stand to, to hear somebody laugh when, when I was going through what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. Because for me, I couldn't see any reason why you were laughing. It was said to be happy about it. But you, you're free to do what you want to do. Because you're a different person from me. You have a different feelings. Now you know, have you gone to see her? When's the last time you spoke to her? Last time I spoke to her was last year. When I spoke to her for, for the first time in a hell of a long time. Now, I said it this morning and I'm saying it again. If by any chance, because I heard a statement that if somebody don't ask you for bereavement, somebody said that they wouldn't give them, they wouldn't, be, they wouldn't forgive them. We say our, our Father's prayers every morning or every day. Or what do we ask for when we do it? Forgiveness. So if we keep asking forgiveness for forgiveness and we can't do it ourselves, I don't think we should be given forgiven. Do you or her think there's anything to forgive each other for? I don't know what she, how she feel or what. But since um, I've done what I've done, I've got baptized on the 13th of, of June, of um, January last year. How, and, do you feel, how do you feel? Then? And the, 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 the 13th of January is a very significant number for me. Stephen was born on the 13th of September. I was born on the 13th of March. And so I got baptized on the 13th of January because I'm trying to start a new life from what I was doing before. And so that's very significant. If by any chance my ex-wife decides she wants to talk to me at any time and call me, I will go. And I'll, I'll tell her that I'm sorry for the way I behave. But I was myself when some of the things I was doing, which was wrong. I now see all of that in front of me. Have you forgiven the police? I had forgiven the police long ago. That's why I, be, I kept working with them, because I wanted to try and let them understand that they need to change their ways. And if I can work with them from all the, some of the stuff that they did to my family, I don't see why they can't work with anybody else. What do you think was the real legacy of the McPherson report then? We, th we need to have a review of the McPherson report because we had a group of people who used to sit around the table every month to see what recommendation was being used and what, who, which forces and which people were using the recommendation. Now, for many years now, since they disbanded the group that I was part of, we don't know what's happening. So we need we need a review to see exactly who is doing what and what and what they need to do. That involve that includes the police as well, you know, and all the other organisation who's got big, a uh, lot of people working for them, to see how far they've gone since the McPherson report was was done. Finally, how will you be marking the day? I will be marking the day in the church. I'll be in the church, and I'm, I'm hoping that you can join us on that Sunday. Yeah, because got, that's I've the best the place. That's the best place I should be in, because without the Almighty Father, who is going to keep him strong and, and let him, you know, because we, you know, I went to I went to a funeral the other day in Jamaica. One of my friends. Um, mother died and I'm saying to myself because I'm doing all this forgiveness now and I'm, I'm trying to make my life a better life nothing in this earth belongs to us nothing not even the very here that we breathe belongs to us because I look at the the fact that when this woman was put down to rest her house her car her money 
everything that she owned was left there. So whatsoever we have and keep saying it's mine, it's mine, it's not ours. It's only a loan. Even the life that we have is a loan. It doesn't belong to us. And I think if people start to think about it, we'd, we'd act better to with each other mm. because we're only here for a short space of time. Some of us have a longer time than the others. But we don't do the things that we're supposed to do. And I'm just hoping and praying that because of the, the, the situation where I've done this forgiveness and I'm seeing the, the world in a different light, that I can make myself into somebody who's more pleasant than the person that I am now. And that's my aim in, in, in view for the next how many years that I'm going to be here for.